Um, what I'd like to talk about now is like adjusting your graphing window to get things to fit. So I, um, I have a couple equations entered in and right now I'm at uh, standard zoom. And so I want to talk about how to uh, maneuver around your graphs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the first graph. Uh, what I do is I uh, take the uh, cursor until the equal sign is highlighted and then I hit enter. If I hit enter once, I have this, uh, the equal sign is like um, uh, highlighted with a black box. And basically what that does is that displays that particular graph. And if I go back and I hit enter again and I remove that box, then it turns that particular expression off. One other thing I want to remind you guys is that if I go into mode and I come down here, I can also turn that table off and just do a full screen. Now if I change this to full screen and hit graph, what that does is it gets rid of the table of values and I get just the screen. You might also notice that I have a grid uh, in the background. Sometimes I like the grid, sometimes I don't. Um, a lot of times my students will, I, I make them write things out by hand on graph paper. And so I want them to kind of see what the graph looks like uh, as they sketch it out on paper and then compare it to uh, the graph on their calculator. So one way that I could turn the grid on is when I'm in graphing mode, if I hit second zoom, that pulls up the format. And the third option here is I could turn the grid off, I can have a grid dot, or I could have a grid line. And then the grid color I can change too. So right now it's uh, medium gray, I can make it light gray. Uh, white obviously won't show up. Uh, I could do dark gray, I could do blue. Um, maybe we'll do like a light blue. And then go from there. So now if I hit graph, now my grid is like light, oh no, let's go back to light gray. <laughs> that's awfully bright. I was trying to make it look like real graph paper, but that's a little too much. So let's change it back. I usually just leave it at gray um, or, or uh, whatever the default is, but we'll do light gray. Okay, and we'll leave it on. So now um, what I wanna do is this grid, there are adjustments for the grid. So. Uh, let me show you how to do the standard fixed, uh, fixed zooms. So if I click on zoom, I could do a Z box, which is I can draw a box and the calculator will zoom in on it. I could do zoom in and that will allow me to move the cursor to a location on the screen and just kind of zooms in on that spot. Zoom out, same thing, I move the cursor around and all that. But the, what I really want to show you is zoom standard. And so zoom standard gives me a 10 by 10 window. In other words, if I come in here and click on window, I'm going to have an X minimum value of negative 10, an X maximum value of positive 10. My X scale is one unit. My Y minimum is negative 10. My Y max is positive 10. And then my Y scale for the grid is um, 0.7. Now delta X is the increment in which the graph draws uh, the corresponding x and y values. The smaller this number is, the more smooth the curve can be. Um, if I make a really big number uh, and I have like a crazy polynomial, then the curve gets a little choppy. Uh, the trace step uh, has to do with tracing and that's, uh, we trace based on the x values Everything is based on the independent variable x and I'll go through all that in a second. So let's go back to the graph. Okay, now if I were to turn on this first equation and I graph it, boom, I can see it. Now what trace does, if I click on the trace button, uh, if I move to the right, notice that I'm following that increment of 0.15 repeating. Uh, what that does is it just moves along the curve in the x direction and I can move left or right, but it increments my x by 0.15 one five, one five, repeating. And then it automatically displays the corresponding um, Y value. Notice also that Y1 is the graph that I'm looking at. If I hit the down button, nothing changes. However, if I go back to Y equals and I turn on the second graph, now when I hit graph, I'm gonna have two lines. So now when I hit trace, I'm gonna go, if I hit the up, cursor or the down cursor, I toggle through the different equations. Again, if I uh, go left or right, that's going to increment my x value. 
and then give me the corresponding y value along whichever curve I'm on. Okay? Now, I have a third equation, and I'm going to come down here and turn that on. And it's uh, quadratic, but when I hit graph, hmm, I only have two graphs displaying. So this is going to show you how to zoom in on that graph, but also use a little bit of algebra uh, to think about um, what's going on. If I look at that third graph, it's turned on, but I have x squared plus 15. Well, uh, depending on your level of math expertise, um, the plus 15 is going to give me a y-intercept at 15. So if my window goes from negative 10 to 10 in the x direction, and the y goes from negative 10 to 10 in, in the range uh, portion of the window, and I graph that, and my y-intercept is at 15, it'll never show up. So one thing that I like to do when it comes to setting the, um, uh, the window is sometimes I look at the table of values. And so if I click on a second graph that gives me the table of values, and I'm going to look and see um, you know, what kind of values am I getting? Well, if I go over to this third equation, which is my x squared plus 15 equation, I notice that my y values are really, really big. In fact, the lowest y value is 15, right? Um, as a math teacher, I know that that's a parabola that opens up with a vertex at 0, 15, and that's why my minimum value um, occurs at x equals 0, y equals 15. But basically, my y value for this third equation will never graph because my y values um, don't go above 15. So if I come down here and I change my y max to, say, 20, now when I hit graph, I change um, what the calculator is displaying, and I can get a piece of that third equation. Um, another thing that I can do that's kind of interesting Let's assume I want to zoom in right here where these two graphs intersect. In fact, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to change this to um, negative uh, 1. And hit delete to delete that. So now when I graph these, I think I, I should have um, some interactions where those graphs all kind of interact. But let's assume that I'm really interested in this area here. Well. This, uh, if I click on zoom and choose option number one, zoom box, what I can do is I can use the cursor to move these crosshairs to uh, a corner in a rectangular box that I'm going to draw. So I want to get those curs this cursor in a position where I want one of the corners of the rectangular box, one of the corners of the rectangular box that I want to draw, and then I'm going to zoom in on that particular rectangular box. So once I get the cursor in place, I hit enter, and now I'm going, to, I'm going to extend to the left and down, and that will draw this rectangular box for me. If I hit enter again, what it does is it zooms in on that little rectangular box that I just drew. Okay, And I could do that again. So now that I'm zoomed in a little bit better, if I hit zoom again and go Z box, now what I want to do is I want to move this cursor to a point of interest. I'm going to move it up just a little bit because I want to try to get all three functions and I want to graph and zoom in on where they intersect. So I'm going to hit enter once. That marks that corner of the box. I'm going to hit the cursor to move over and then well, right here. And then I'm going to move down again and now I'm going to zoom in on that. So if I hit enter again, we zoom in on that box that I've just drawn. So that's how you maneuver around in your, um, your graphing window.